Hello guys, welcome back to one more session of RSD Pathology. I'm Dr. Anjad, the Chief Mentor at RSD Pathology. And today we are going to see a very interesting approach to one of the common cases which might come across and you might even stumble to diagnose and struggle to kind of go with the differential diagnosis. And that's about mycosis fungoides. So I'm going to show you a classical and a very superb and a beautiful case first. Let's go and look at the case first. Let's look at the pointers for diagnosis and then we'll come back to the same place where you're going to together struggle and identify the points of differentiation for few common things which might come across right so this is a case here i'm just zooming out here i can you can see clearly the skin biopsy the most important thing in a skin biopsy is please gross it very very carefully tiny 4 mm tissue you might lose what is important if it's not crossed properly right perfect there are two sections here and whenever you are going to suspect let's say a malignancy please don't take multiple sections maximum two if it's a very good technician, they might even sometimes limit with one. The reason for two sections is you have the two cut surface. That's the reason you have two sections, right? So these are just two slides. Don't keep on cutting multiple things, uh, thinking that you will identify something good. You might, but sometimes if it's malignancy, like I said, you might need more tissues for you to do markers as well, right? Now let's go into the image straight away. Even in this power, what you can appreciate is, okay, more or less fine uh, ep epidermis it's not having a very gross papillomatosis or hyperplastic or acanthosis or your keratinization there right one thing which is very very prominent even this power is this part look at this part look at this part you have good amount of sparse to dense i won't say a classical band like inflammatory infiltrate yes but yes to some extent a good amount of i hope so it's an inflammatory infiltrate in the superficial papillary dermis area right perfect now let's go a little bit deep here in this power itself i want you to clearly delineate that there is a little bit amount of fibrotic elements going on in this area that's very 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 important the moment you zoom in you might tend to lose the difference between the normal dermal collagen and the fibrotic collagen. The normal dermal collagen has a very different texture compared to the fibrotic areas here. There's definitely a dense fibrosis going on here, right? There's definitely a superficial dense fibrosis going on, right? If you've forgotten how a normal skin biopsy looks, go into the RST exam, go and look at the histology first because the moment you know histology, everything else comes beautifully easily for us, right? Now, let's focus on the big guy here, the inflammatory infiltrate. I can, if I'm going to write a description, I'll classically write, okay, I'm having a good amount of inflammatory infiltrate, mostly lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate, a lymphocytic infiltrate in the superficial dermis predominantly around the perivascular area, predominantly on the perivascular area, right? I can describe that. Yes, if you look at it, yes, I do have a perivascular infiltrate, little bit more, right? Little bit more. It actually does not give much of an importance because quite a few inflammatory conditions as well as neoplastic conditions have this, right? Perfect. So we'll look into it. We'll look into it. That's all. I am not going into the epidermis. Since I told you the diagnosis, I am sure that your eyes will be itching towards to find that guy epidermotrophism, right? First and the foremost rule, epidermotrophism is not just seen only in mycosis. There are few conditions where you see epidermotrophism. We'll see that very soon, right? You can see them clear, clear. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, let's look whether I have ep we have epidermotrophism or not. Is the epidermis clear? You can see the entire length of epidermis. Yes, lymphocytes inside, lymphocytes inside, lymphocytes going inside. Actually, now, if you look at this, this entire thing is a collection of lymphocyte seen in the epidermis. I can actually pull this off into a potrius microopsis, right? It kind of looks like, you can see the basal layer here. You have a collection of lymphocytes, mononuclear cells in this place, right? This is very, very important for us. Look again, there's a collection here. Let's go to it. Let's go to it. Do we see anything else? Kind of, yes, kind of a destroyed epidermis, but it's definitely seen there, right? Again, a collection here which is seen in the epidermis. I'm sure that now we are more or less sure that, yes, this biopsy has epidermotrophism, right? Epidermotrophism is a simple thing. I'll go and draw and come back to epidermotrophism and we'll see why epidermotrophism is very important for us. Okay, let's assume this is an epidermis. Normally, the lymphocytes will be there in the perivascular area in the papillary dermis, right? Also, superficial dermis here, right? Here. Let's assume that in mycosis fungoides, mycosis fungoides is a CD4 positive neoplasm, right? So these are CD4 positive atypical lymphocytes. The moment I have CD4 positive atypical lymphocytes, they will definitely go and go here. The reason is these are CD4 positive, right? If they are CD4 positive, you will have the affiliation or affliction towards the MHC molecule. MHC 
two molecule exactly and here if you remember the normal thing you have the Langerhans dendritic cells right the Langerhans dendritic cells MHC molecule is the one which kind of attracts the CD4 so if this statement is true quite a few CD4 positive cells can move into the epidermis not just mycosis a CD4 positive neoplasm definitely can a CD4 positive inflammatory condition might also go there right so what's the differentiating point epidermotropism is this that's all i am seeing lymphocytes between the layers of epidermis which i generally don't see is called an epidermotropism the basic fundus is about the cd4 positivity right so quite a few things can go into by default uh, malignant uh, cd4 uh, tumor cells like in mycosphingoris has more affliction because of more expression of the molecules and also things right perfect now this is sorted so how do I differentiate, right? I have to differentiate. Obviously, we have to differentiate, right? Let's go back to the slide once again, right? So let's look at the slide. Let's zoom into it. Let's see if I'm finding anything classical which will help even a first year postgraduate identify saying that, okay, yes, it is abnormal. There are a few. Let's see if I can zoom this a little bit more. Uh, look at these areas. I hope you can appreciate that. Wait, 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 wait it's not normal right it's kind of folded in here right right let's look at more things see look at this guy look at this guy where is it ah it's right look at this this kind of an extra kind of an halo around it and this nucleus of the lymphocytes is not proper it's intended here right if you remember your need pg preparation i'm sure this will come across your mind as your cerebriform nuclear it's not proper it's folded and if you go to the cells here, here again, even the epidermotrophic areas, you can see, okay, not normal, not normal, not normal, not normal. It's a convoluted nuclei. What I'm trying to say is the most important characteristic feature of epidermotrophism is the atypical nature of the mycosis, atypical nature and not epidermotrophism. Please always do remember that, right? Look at this. Look at this. It's looking like a halo, right? This is specifically a halo surrounding the WBC where there's a little bit of more cytoplasm and the cerebriform appearance, the irregular uh, indentation is one thing which I want you guys to look into rather than just saying that, okay, it's an epidermotrophism, CD4 positivity, I'm going to call it mycosifungoidus. That generally puts us into a wrong position because these are not common cases. They're pretty rare cases, right? So you also have to be very clear in saying that, okay, I saw an atypical lymphocyte. Look at this guy. They are atypical, right? There's no doubt they are normal. They are atypical. They are atypical. They are not normal. They are folded, right? They Sometimes they are big. They are folded, right? That's very, very important. The biggest and the important way to differentiate is I do see epidermotrophism by atypical lymphocytes. If you're classically describing a case, I'll also look for this word, atypical lymphocytes. Yes, I do have cerebriform nuclei. Cerebriform nuclei might not be very well demonstrated in a histopathological section. Maybe you go to an 100x, you might see it. It's something which can be easily appreciated in a peripheral smear, right? In other words, it is irregular nuclei. If you have an irregular nuclear membrane, and little bit of pleomorphism, this variation in size, right? And a little bit of haloness around surrounding them. I would say, okay, this looks like most likely an atypical lymphocyte. This is what I want you to look for in any biopsy where you see, okay, it looks like a suspected mycosphingoidus. Never, never just go with the epidermotrophism alone, right? Okay, I'll put this slide in the uh, notes in the RSDXR. If you want to have a look at it at any point of time, you can definitely have a look at it, right? That's a beautiful case. Right? It's a beautiful case with a very significant potrius micropsis in these areas. You can see them even the low power, you can appreciate the potrius micropsis, right? And it's not in this section alone, even this section. Look at that. You can see the abscesses, epidermotrophism. See, get used to it. Get used to it in the lower power, get used to the higher power. Actually, no, here, wait, I'll zoom. Let's see if I can zoom in further. It's not zooming in beyond the limit, but you can see that they are not normal. They are irregular they are intended right this gives us a easy clarity in different uh, diagnosing thing right now let's go to differential diagnosis like i said differential diagnosis is something which is important for us right let's add a page and look at the common dds there are n number of dds of microsphingoids i'm going to uh, go with common dds common dds in matlab like whatever you might see in the routine uh, postings or something which is very close to the mycosis fungus, right? Now, let's write mycosis fungus. I'm going to go with pure histopathological finding. I am really not interested in going to the IHC because IHC is very, very easy. Anyone can do it, right? But I need to have suspicion, fine? Okay, so first, 
uh, there are few things you want to take into epidermotrophism lymphocytic cytology or the morphology of the lymphocyte and also about the dermis the dermis how do they look like and a little bit about the epidermis also if required right so let's take epidermis let's take epidermotrophism let's take lymphocytes problem and any other findings which might be significant right the first important thing is in the epidermis you might see portraits and microapsis again not always but definitely might see portraits microapsis right that's something which i want you to remember at the same time just below the epidermis i should write a wiry thin fibrosis is very very prominent in case of a mycosis fungoides right you will see a wiry fibrosis a very thin fibrosis in the superficial dermis in the papillary dermis you might see them fine epidermotrophism is classical and the most important thing is it's often disproportionate to the spongiosis okay that's very very important single atypical lymphocytes along the basal layer will be there and also in the higher epidermis right that's important epidermotrophism will be present but it will be disproportionate to the spongiosis again if you were uh, difficult in uh, understanding what a spongiosis means go to the initial lectures of rxdx where i have uh, discussed in detail about spongiotic dermatitis and what are the normal findings in a skin biopsy right this is very very important it has to be atypical it has to be irregular convoluted nuclear membrane that gives the appearance of cerebriform appearance very 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 important right again uh, you might have infiltrates like a band nodular that doesn't matter at all other inflammatory cells will be very very sparsely scanned that's something which you have to look into it right next let's go uh, we'll look at two three differential diagnoses common things which can come one i want you to remember is chronic spongiotic dermatitis or eczema clinically also it might go hand in hand so i have to mention about this chronic spongiotic dermatitis or eczema right there could be obviously in chronicity so might think of uh, something which is not a uh, treatable condition like a uh, uh, tumor clinically as well right first thing in uh, chronic spongiotic dermatitis the most important thing is spongiosis that'll be very very prominent spongiosis that's the first thing i want you to see in the epidermis which i won't see in case of a mycosis spongiosis right very prominent exocytosis parakeratosis very very prominent here we didn't have much of the problems in your other layers, right? Parakeratosis is not a finding seen in mycosis fungoides. It's a tumor. It's a lymphoma, hematolymphoid tumor, right? Right? Obviously, fine. Here also you'll see your epidermotrophism, right? Here also I'll see epidermotrophism. But the most important thing is it's always proportionate to the spongiosis, right? It's not disproportionate. It's proportionate to spongiosis. Because is like if you have more spongiosis, I expect a more epidermotrophism, but there it's always disproportionate. Spongiosis might not be a prominent feature, but epidermotrophism will be very, very prominent feature in case of mycos, right? And the most important thing here, they are very, very, very small and they are very, very, very bland. Spongiotic dermatitis will not even have a single ounce of atypia. If atypia is there, by default, it's true, right? And though, like I said, even the first finding when you saw the mycos fungoides, in chronic spongiotic dermatitis, it's classically perivascular. It will not be a band like, it will not be nodular, right? Here, it will have a classical perivascular inflammation. We call it a coat sieve pattern, right? Classical perivascular infl uh, inflammation infiltrate will be there. That's again a very, very important finding in case of a chronic spongiotic dermatitis. You can see polyclonal cells. Yosnophils are commonly seen, especially when there's an allergic related cause. Yosnophil will be commonly seen in case of an eczema, right? Then we'll go to one more thing, right? Like I said, there are a huge number of list of cases to be discussed. One more thing which I want you to understand and differentiate is lichen. Because lichen planus, band like lymphocytic infiltrate the moment you look like a band we'll jump into lichen right that's something which every postgraduate and a young consultant does right how do i differentiate them yes there's a point of difference for sure interface lichen or dermatitis the patterns of dermatitis is very very important to remember right so this will have a classical interface or a lichen or dermatitis that is important see that's why pattern-based approach is important for the entire pathology not just your dermatopathology you'll have sawtooth acanthosis you'll have civet bodies all these findings are important right if you it's not a diff difficult thing to diagnose but if you're confused or clinically there's a confusion please go to the higher power you will see civet bodies you will not see civet bodies in your mycosis fungoides because it's not a problem of the epidermis right here you'll have your classical saw tooth acanthosis fine that also is a classical finding in case of the epidermis of lichen planus right will i see uh, epidermotrophism unlikely usually absent you won't see them right will i see lymphocytes definitely 
a dense band of lymphocytes will be seen in the dermal area right obviously there'll be no atp there'll be no atp there'll be small bland lymphocytes as usual the most important thing you will see a dense band right dense band of lymphocytic infiltrate at the dermoepithelial junction band like that's a classical finding right of your lichen planus right these are some things we want you to just compare there are lots and lots of dds to be compared with microbes memories uh, you might get confused with through prp petrias rubra pilaris there are a few classical findings for that cutaneous lupus discord lupus erythematosus could be a finding sometimes you no know, even a large para uh, psoriasis uh plaque para psoriasis can also be a finding for an uh, microbes memory right I, what i'll do one thing is i'll stop this lecture here i'll upload the video in the rxd sap under dermatopathology section i'll have a very deep detailed table also added to the notes so that whenever you are having a case just search my course for goddess land into this look at all the differential diagnosis right if you're not subscribed yet click on the subscribe button and there'll be few useful links in the description like your telegram channel your uh, whatsapp community of pathologists let's make the pathology discussion the best way possible right thank you for listening see you soon till then bye bye from dr ranjit bye bye